All right, so today we are going to go over um, the I loops or the the for loop that we have in Snap. I'm gonna go in, uh, I'm gonna go over the objectives real quick. So today we are gonna use a for loop to repeat, count repetitions, and draw shapes with repeated patterns. Shapes. Also, we're going to use I as a variable inside of a repeat loop. And that is it for today. So I'm going to go into Snap. Very quickly, I'm going to go over the four different loops that we've gone over so far. And that is, first off, the forever loop. The forever loop, of course, forever loops, whatever's inside of this uh, block. The repeat certain amount of times, whatever's inside of the block. We have the repeat until, which uses a conditional. All right, something like this. To stop the loop whenever the condition is true. And finally, the one that we're going to use today is the for when i equals 1 to a certain number, in this case 1 to 10, the loop will uh, continue. Now, this one's a little bit different in that it's usually used for a list, but a list is something that we haven't gone over yet. So I'm barely going to introduce this in a very simple manner so that that way later on when we do use a list, it'll make more sense. All right, so in order to get started, I'm gonna have you do a very simple exercise, and that is to go into variables, sorry, into control, and take one of these for I loops. Actually, you know what, do not take that yet. Go into motion, looks, sorry. Go into looks, and we are going to say a couple of things, repeat this several times. Again, I'm just clicking duplicate. And in hello, I'm going to go and put one, two, three, four, all the way down, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm only going to go up to ten. All right. Now, if I take this back, and I'm just going to put one second for each one. All right. If you notice that when I run this, it's going to say one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. Right. Okay. So I think that one thing that should be obvious is that it's the block that is actually repeating over and over and over again. There's a lot of repetition here that we would like to get rid of because we're trying to just get rid of any details that are uh, unnecessary. And the only thing that changes really is this counter where I change one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, usually you wouldn't need the loop for this case, but like I said before, the the counter loop or the for loop is used usually for lists. So this is just an example of how the loop actually works. I'm gonna go into control and I'm gonna take out one of these loops, and I want you to see how the same thing is done with the for loop. All right, so I'm gonna take one of these, I'm just gonna duplicate one, put it here. And instead of putting say one for one second, I'm gonna take this I, I'm gonna drag and drop it where I have the, the string input, meaning where I'm gonna type in what it's gonna say. Also notice that I equals what? One through 10. So if I click on this, what happens? Same thing as other one. All right. Now notice if I do this, and then I put maybe two seconds. So what happened here is that it actually said one for a lot longer. Let's go with five. So you can see it again a little bit more clear. If I look at the stepping, and then pause it again, stop. So it says one, and then it says one again, right? So I doesn't change until the loop actually finishes. So as soon as the loop finishes, then I will change. That's just one thing I want you, I wanted you to notice. 
I'm going to take this out. And just with this example, I'm going to go ahead and use it. Now, also, one last thing is that you can rename this I so that that way it gives you some meaning in actual uh, computer languages. You won't be able to rename it, but in this case, for Snap, you can. All you do is click on it and you change the name of I. In this case, let's call it um, number set. All right, so now it's called number set. Put that in there. And there you go. So now you have something like that. All right, so this is just an example to show you what it is that the for loop does. I'm going to get rid of both of them. And I'm going to build another script right now. It looks a little like this. I'm going to go into pen. Look pen down. I'm going to go into my control. Go to four. I'm going to rename my I to something like length. And press OK. Take off the stepper. And I'm going to change this from 1 to 100. So what does that mean? That now my length, every time I go through the loop, it's going to first be 1, and then it's going to be 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth, up to 100. But we're going to change something right now because I'm going to add something inside and that is to go to motion, and I'm going to move, and this is where it's going to get a little bit different. Here, I'm going to take my move, and I'm going to go to operators, and I'm going to multiply. Where's my multiplication? There it is. I'm going to multiply my length times 2. So what does that mean? If I have... For the, for, for the first loop, it's going to be 1, so it's actually going to move, I'm sure you know the answer, and I'm going to turn 90 degrees. Alright, I want you to go ahead and run this. First, I want you to look at it and think of what it's going to do. I'm going to have the pen down, I have my length for 1 to 100. It's going to move the length times 2, so I can assume that the first time that it's going to move, it's going to move a total of 2 steps, right? Alright, so make sure that you do understand this script and how the for loop works because it's super important and it is going to come out on the unit exam along with the AP, um, at the AP end of the year exam. Alright, so we're going to run this. And you can use this just as a basis for you to look at so that you can uh, understand the basics of it right so I'm gonna go ahead and click here and you see what it does right. you click it again see what it does so on and so forth right it looks pretty cool um, again just understand what is happening here it is changing the it's changing the amount that it moves each time so for the first time that it makes a square Sorry, for the first time that it makes the move, it moves two times, and then it turns 90 degrees, and then it moves four times, right, because it's two times two is four, and then it's three times two is six, and then it moves uh, in that pattern, right? So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, so on and so forth. All right. All right, so what I want you to do now is just play around with this, move the numbers around. Um, for example, maybe change the degrees to something else. I don't know, I'm going to try like 30. See what happens there. Oh, it looks like I made something else, a spiral. Hey, maybe I didn't like that. Maybe that's too uh, that's too short. You know what? What if I go lower than 2? What if I start multiplying down? So let's go with like 0.8. All right. It's clear. Again, I'm just playing around with it. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, so it looks like it does that. Let's go to something less, 0.5. All right, let's go with 0.1. Yeah, so it looks like it just makes it smaller. Let's go with something else like maybe 121. I don't know, I'm just making up numbers at this point. The two. All right, it looks like I make a triangle. That looks pretty cool. Oh, 
Uh, so you know what? One of the things that I'm thinking right now is why don't I just put this in, in a loop? And again, right now, I'm just playing around with it. I am trying to get used to using the for loop, right? Again, every time the loop runs, this changes from 1 to 100. So I'm going to go here and repeat something. Let's go with that. Okay, so it looks like a, there's a nice little pattern there. I think I'm going to change the degrees now to something else. I'm going to give you your assignment right now. So, one second. Not sure what it's going to do. I'm only going to repeat this three times. All right, so there's something else. So, today's assignment, what it's going to be is you are going to take this and you're going to make a square maker all right i'm going to give you a hint you might need another type of loop in here all right look at this loop play around with it make sure that you understand exactly what's going on and you might need to add a, another type of loop either inside or outside of this for loop in order to create something like this something where i can modify I'm just going to call this square multiplier. And something that I can modify, go to motion, make it turn in the direction of 90. I can modify the length of the squares. So, for example, if I put a 10 right here, it'll create something like this. All right, so I don't need it to multiply that many times. But, guys, all of this that... The, the assignment for today, all of it you can do from all the previous lessons that we've done. Actually, the previous two lessons that we've done, which is the one from yesterday, where we had to create the parameter and the, where we had to create the parameter, and also the one where we had to loop to make the square. All right, so let's say I put something that's like 10. Let's put a 5. It'll create something that's a little bit shorter. Again, I don't have to loop that that many times. If I put something that's even smaller, like a 1, it'll make something even smaller. All right. So that's your assignment for today, is to go ahead and create this. And like I said, you're going to need a for loop, and probably, well, not probably, you will need another type of loop as well, ones that we've already used. So I want you to play around with that and try to make this square multiplier. Notice that this one is not spiraling. This one is actually creating a full square first. Uh, four. And if you get this done in time, then you can go ahead and add color, add whatever it is you want. Um, but this is what I'm looking for. All right, that's it for today.